Hello, my name is Jose Garcia, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use XForm to assist you in correcting G2 curvature uh, disconnections. So, as an example here, I have a bounded plane on this uh, plane here, and I have two swept surfaces that I uh, swept using a G, I believe this is a G2 curve. Um, but we can always double check in a minute. So the goal of this exercise is to assist you in getting uh, these surfaces to be G2 continuous because if you're not aware when you create a surface in NX it requires you to um, subject it to tolerances. So let's take a look at the pull structure of our spline here that I have. I'm gonna go and select the spline and I'm gonna go into analysis and I will say show pulls and as you can see, I have one, two, three, uh, one, two, three poles there. So this is a G2 curvature um, spline. So the goal here is to use a surfacing tool to assist me in creating this surface. Now, I could go and use through curve mesh and create the surface. By the way, if you're wondering how I created these uh, guide curves, uh, I used bridge curve with a G2 continuous uh, continuity. Uh, oops, sorry, let me just go ahead and remove that for now. I'll just undo what I just did. So I could go in here and use through curve mesh. That'll totally work. The problem with through curve mesh is that it produces a surface that is a that is very pole structure dense. So there's a lot of poles in that surface that will really make it difficult for me to uh, modify it if I need to. So let me show you that right now. I'm gonna come up here in through curve mesh. Uh, I will select a curve or point. So I'm gonna select my splines here. Oops, sorry about that, let me get rid of that. I will add a new set. I will put this one here as well, like that. Now for my cross curves, I will go in here and select this curve first middle mouse button, this curve next, middle mouse button, this curve next, middle mouse button, this curve next, and then say OK. Now to the eye, that looks pretty good, right? It's like, OK, well, that, that's pretty nice. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, if we select it and then we go into analysis and show the poles, this is quite a dense pole structure that really isn't going to help us. Uh, we, we would have to simplify it a little bit more. And, you know, I, I really believe that that could be uh, fixed if we go with another command. So if you have the ability to use a studio surface, which is found in the surface tool and then studio surface there, you can use the method that I'm about to show you to make sure that this is always G2 continuous. So I'm going to come up here to studio surface. And if you notice, the menu for this is very similar to the through curve mesh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my primary curves, which are going to be this, these guys here. So there's one. Remember where you click matters here. So if you're not careful when you select down here, your vector could be flipped and it would give you a very wonky surface. And then I'm going to go in here and add a new set and put one additional curve there. So there are my cross curve. I'm sorry, my primary curves. Now for my cross curves, I'm going to select the exact same curves I use. So that curve there, middle mouse button. This curve here, middle mouse button, this curve here, middle mouse button, and that curve there. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that these are curvature continuous. Now in the previous example with through curve mesh, uh, I did not specify any continuity. And so that's why the pole structure was a little lighter. But if we specified continuity, the pole structure would be even denser. So in this case, my first cross section, which happens to be this curve here. I want it to be G2 continuous with these surfaces here. My last cross section, I'm going to do the exact same thing, one there and there and there. And then for my first guide, I want it to be G2 continuous with this bounded plane there. The last guide I can't select anything on because there's no surface for it to attach to. So when I say OK on that, and then I select the surface and then go into analysis and I say show pulls, you can see that this is a much better pole structure. Now, I know it looks very similar to what we had with the through curve mesh, but believe me when I tell you that a studio surface outputs a much cleaner 
and easier to work with surface. So now that we have these surfaces or this surface here, let's use the surface continuity tool to check if there's any irregularities here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that, choose multi-face. Uh, I will say that I want to check for G1 tangency and G2 curvature. Uh, and I want to suggest a scale factor here. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and say, okay. So as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap here. So it's not really meeting G2 requirements. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, why isn't it doing that? Because we specified G2 curvature continuity. So why isn't it following that uh, continuity? And the answer to that is because these surfaces are subject to a tolerance. So we have to go in there and fix it so that this will not be a problem. So the way we're going to fix it is by using X form. And this is how I would fix it. So if I come up here into the home tab, I can go into the datum plane and point set. And instead of using curve points, I'm going to choose spline points. And here where it says spline point type, I'm going to use poles. And I'm going to select this curve here. So there's one. Let's go ahead and say apply. I'm going to grab these poles here as well. Go ahead and say apply. And I'm going to grab these poles down here as well. And then say OK. What I'm going to do now is create an axis of symmetry. And in order to get that, you kind of have to be aware that where this line and this line meet, their intersection is the axis of symmetry for this surface. So if I go over into curve and create a line that goes from here to there, whoops, let me try that again, from there to there, hit apply, then from here to there, then hit OK, and then come over into the home and then activate the point command, I can choose an intersection point. So I will select this curve here to intersect with that curve there, and it gives me my point. So now what I want to do is create a datum plane by three points. So if I come down here, I can choose the datum plane command. And I can select that point there. The first point on my pole that is from the top bridge curve. And then the third pole on my bottom bridge curve. Or I should say the first pole of the third bottom bridge curve. So I'm going to go ahead and then say apply. And I'll do the exact same thing for this next one. So one there, and I'll put another one right there. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So the reason why we're doing this is because we have to line up the pole structure of this surface so we can achieve G2 continuity. So now that I have that, I'm going to take the point set of the original spline from the swept command and project it onto these planes. So if I come up here into the curve tab, I can say project curve, where it says objects to project to. I will choose this plane here, specify the vector. I will use the Orient Express tool to pick the Y axis and I'll just flip it. Now, for some reason, in my case, when I select multiple planes, it doesn't project it to those planes, so I'll just have to do this again. But if yours works, then by all means, uh, you don't have to do this again. But I'll come in here and select that plane there. And again, the Orient Express tool, I will choose the Y axis and simply flip it and go ahead and say OK. So now that I have these, these uh, projected points, I want to modify the structure of the surface by going into X form and then selecting this surface here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Boop. And now I can come up here to my filter and enable existing point like that. And now it is my job to drag these to my newly projected um, points. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. What I want you to be aware of is this G2 Max 2.0 that sits up here. Watch what happens when we're finished with this surface. So I'm just going to go in there and drag these in there like that. I'll drag this one in there like that. And then this one I'll drag it in here like that. 
Same thing is true for this one. So I'll move this one over here. And I'll move that one over here. And I'll move that one over here. I'll move this one there. And I'll move that one there. And then just for good measure, let's make sure that this one is also set. And take note that now that G2 max is set to zero. So we have successfully achieved G2 continuity. We have not done it to this side. So if we take a, an analysis, a surface continuity analysis. Uh, oops, let me try that again because it's very sensitive. You can see that when I enable G2 curvature, this side is still messed up. So we need to fix it. So, so we, just so we can get it out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and simply mirror both of these projected uh, curves. So I'm going to come up here into the home, drop this down and put a point there like that. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, I should say point on curve, select the curve there. I want an arc length percentage, which will be 50% of the way, which is halfway through. And now I'm going to go in here and put a plane on that point through the curve and finally I will simply take these point sets that I have or I'm sorry these projected curves and mirror them over to the other side using the mirror feature command so I'll come down here and say mirror feature and I will select that plane there and we'll say okay and now I'll just drag the X form all the way down and we can come in here and edit these poles and make sure you have existing point enabled. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that one there. We'll drag this one there and we'll drag that one there. So we'll drag that one there. And we'll put this one here as well. And just for good measure, I just want to make sure that this one is on the right point as well. So we'll do this one here as well. Again, take note of this G2 max. Put that one there. Put that one there. As you can see, after we have successfully aligned these poles, we get rid of that G2 max line. So that is how you can use XForm to assist you in creating uh, G2 continuous surfaces.